Hello everyone and welcome back to a... Is this a sixth episode already? Wow. Sixth episode of How to Date a Cat. As you can see, we are on our last try for romancing Snooty Booty. Gotta get that feline booty. But, um... Hope we can do this. We failed with McMurphy, but this one we shall not fail. And we did manage to get her lotion out of it, so let's not waste any time and find out what this stuff is. How does Snooty Booty keep finding experimental cosmetics? We're on an island in the middle of nowhere. It makes no sense. And this one from the incinerator, no less? I mean, obviously they're making them with the cats here? I decide to run some tests on it. Snooty Booty developed some nasty worlds from using this. What? I want to see what it's made from. I have a feeling this is not something the professor would want me to be poking around in. So I've come to the lab late at night to make sure I don't get any unwanted attention. Oh, that is nasty. I mean, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet, but mm, welts from skin cream, that's the opposite of what you want. I'm quickly able to identify a number of common natural skincare ingredients like shea butter, chamomile, but there are some other components that I can't immediately identify. I check for cat saliva. Maybe we're looking at the same kind of product as the stuff Snooty Booty found washed up on the beach, but no match. I run the sample through the database of organic compounds to see if there are others matches. As I suspected, this cream uses some other cat-based ingredients. This time it looks like the cat urine is being- Ew! Ew! You're putting cat pee on your face? Ugh! Never look- never look at cosmetic ingredients because the, you'll get totally disgusted, guys. Gah! I had better not share this little discovery with Snooty Booty. No. No, you should not. I decide to check for any clues out by the incinerators. Maybe I can find out a little more about where these things are coming from. At the back of the tent area are a couple of large pits that are for, for the disposal of harmful waste from the lab. There's nothing incinerating right now, so I can dig around a little in the smoldering ashes. Ooh, lucky. Smoldering that where there's smoke, there's still fire, so careful, then. I'm tentatively moving the debris about with a stick. S so far, it seems to be just certain cinders. No clues. Suddenly, the science is disrupted by the sound of someone entering the lab. I make myself scarce by crawling around the far side of a nearby bush. As luck would have it, I happen to have ended up at an ideal vantage point to be able to see into the lab through a gate gap in the canvas. Popper? Ooh, the whole team. Two men enter with a large crate. I recognize them as the ferryman and his son. Professor Popper is with them. He directs them to place the crate at the work worktop. The professor reaches in and brings out a small tub that looks identical to the one Snooty Booty found. My guess is that this is the next batch in for testing. What are they testing it on though? The professor stops what he's doing abruptly and looks at his catalog. I presume he's receiving a phone call. He dismisses the two men with a wave of his hand. There's a GPS tracker on it. As soon as they've gone, he turns his attention to the catalog. He looks anxious as he speaks. Yes, they've been delivered. I shall make a start first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, madame. I certainly will, madame. With all due respect, I do understand the urgency, but I'm sure you understand the need for thoroughness. I can assure you, it will be ready for the deadline. Testing on sample 104 is going far sm more smoothly than 103. The improvements are very encouraging. There is a long silence. From the expression on his face, I imagine he is being lectured. It's very important to cross-check it with data here. The island itself has a significant effect on the samples. We still have some tests left to do, and we are making progress, of course. I shall let you know straight away. The call ends abruptly. Presumably, Madame cut him off. He looks angrier than I've ever seen him. He marches out of the lab and heads off in the direction of his tent. I sneak away from the bushes and head back to my own tent. I can continue with my investigations another time. Okay. 
that it? That's all we get? Dang! So obviously it's being made for a pharmaceutical co company off Iden, but it's like, I mean, we could have guessed that ourselves. Still only gonna be one research, so let's, let's get that booty! We shall not fail another time! We will get the booty that is so snooty. Ah, the delicacy of a moment is sometimes only matched by the beauty of the moonlight's reflection on the sea. Snooty Booty turns her big shining silver eyes up to meet mine. Human, I have lived a long life, and only the first of nine, don't you know? It has been much the same for as far back as my fragile memory reaches. Seeing the moon reflected on the sea would once mean only that I had stayed awake too long, and that I should- ah, Missed the rest of the sentence. Miss Clicks. Terrible Miss Clicks. I'm so sorry. Very well. However, seeing how you conduct yourself, human, with the grace of a drunken fruit fly, and yet the confidence of a red-bottomed mandrill has left me quite inspired. You do not care one bit about how you look. Is that a compliment or an insult? I... I can never tell with this cat. I suddenly try to comb my hair with my fingers as Snooty Booty turns her attention back to the moon. I have found since meeting you that when one cares less about one's appearance, one finds the capacity to care more about other things. Is that so, Boots? Quite so, human. Indeed, I have found it rather freeing to bathe in salt water, something which not long ago would have caused me to turn grey with anxiety. In the same vein, I feel I am owed some thanks for teaching you a thing or two about proper skin care. Snooty, your demand that I use a night cream caused me to break out in hives. But once they subsided, you were left with a very healthy glow. All for the sake of beauty. I sigh. Stuart? Yes, Snooty Booty? There is a poem I have, remember. The words have become irrelevant. Relevant, but the sentiment is so enduring that it is almost enough to cause me to weep at the thought of it. Music is also like that, don't you find? And smell. All of the sentences, in fact, are the palette that colors our experiences and leaves an indelible mark on the soul. That's... that's beautiful. Human, I believe you are... You and I are both aesthetists... 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 Something about beauty, sure. Or what? We share the artist's appreciation of the séduisant. And again. What? Really, do you try to keep up? I can tell I'm somewhat spoiling a mood here, so I keep my mouth shut and try to look engaged. I have suffered on this godforsaken island for the lack of many things, but nothing has quite matched the pain of feeling alone. Not having a companion to share the more delicate sensibilities that life has to offer. An alluring sense, a vibrant hue, an epicurean delight, all the subtle joys that are wasted on our more uncivilized cohabitants. It has been like air to my suffocation, sharing time with you, human. Why, Snoots, thank you. I enjoy our time together, too. And so, she plows on as though I am an interruption. I feel that together, you and I might create something rather wonderful. Oh. A masterpiece! Right, a masterpiece. Of, out of what? Out of us, human. A union, a joining together of souls. I don't know. A marriage of hearts and minds. Are you saying what I think you're saying, Snooty? I am saying that I am fond of you. Enough to give me cause to believe that we may be able to commit to each other in the time-honored tradition of love, human. Oh! Oh, wow! Snooty booty! I don't know what to say. Do I love you or do I not feel the same way? This is all so sudden. So, huh. 
How should we do this, Nudie Booty? I guess that would mean giving up on the antidote, but... When you say it like that, I just... I can't not love you. I love you too. I, well, I'm amazed. What you're saying is, is more than I could have hoped for. So it is a great human. You shall dote on me as my equal from now on. Absolutely. I'm 100% about the doting. Snooty will certainly keep that part of this agreement. I'm a little more suspicious about the equal part somehow, but as we sit together, admiring the huge orange moon, I feel quietly confident that she will learn with time and a patient teacher. Did I do it? Did, did I get the booty? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Right after these breaks. Alright. Research four. Here we go. I put on my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swabs, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Ah, of course! Treats! I leave the tent and head for the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents all the way. Meow, 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 meow. Nah, he's not seriously starting to change already, is he? I call out to the lazy subjects as I enter the lab. Okay, okay, whew, just, just pretending. Looky, looky, what have we... Let me try that again. Looky, looky, what have I got? I shake the bag of treats and the small lab erupts with hungry meows. If you want these, you have to behave, okay? I open the first cage, home of the grouchy old Mr. Bumble, and I gently left him onto the counter to be groomed. Morning, Grumpy. Let me check your ears. No debris? Lovely. I have a feeling you may be discharged in the next day or two. I think we might be finished experimenting on you, so you can go back home and stop being prodded. He was brought in with a mild infection. Oh, no, never mind. My, my apologies. It is not all as sinister as I had thought. Slight temperature, weeping eyes, but he seems to have recovered remarkably well. In fact, I'm going to recommend to Mr. Popper that we release him by the end of the week. I give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I give him a begin to brush his matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? There's enough fur here to make another cat! Mr. Bumble is beginning to get agitated, and that's out of displeased grumble. I know, I know, it's very annoying. Just got to trim you up a bit, and then you can get back to sleep. All that aestheticianness work with the booty, snooty booty, is starting to pay off. He resignedly lets me cut off the hair around his bum and the back of his hind legs. Aren't you a good boy? Here we go. Nom nom nom. I pour some of the little fish-shaped treats onto the counter, and the ragamuffin practically inhales them. Now, let's get you back into the, your cozy crate. Yeah. I tuck him away and, and open the next one. Your turn, Socks. Just a cut in color, yeah? I storm at my own joke and begin brushing the little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble and keeps trying to bite the brush. Hey, don't make me get the harness, Socks. That's no fun for either of us. The cat seems to understand and settle down, only giving the brush an occasional nip when he thinks I won't notice. Oh, hello? Wh what's this? I notice a little red patch on his neck just under his chin. Oh no, we don't have bot flies, do we? Poor Soxy. I take the magnifying glass out of my inner pocket and examine the inflamed area closely. Ouch! She begins to struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. It's okay, Socks, I'm just looking. I stroke the little cat to try and calm him down. I hate using sedatives on the subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I'm able to get a better look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything nivering under here. I'm relieved. I don't have to deal with any bot flies. Hmm, it looks strange. It's like a rash or a sore, but I'm not sure how or where he could have picked it up. Options! Oh gosh! I'm aware... I'm wary about how to proceed. Should I just clean it with some saline solution and let the air get it 
get to it, or should I put some of the Professor Susan Cream 116 on it and wrap it in gauze? Ooh. Let's go with the saline solution because that cream, we know what happens with that. A sword like this should be cleaned with a little saline. No need for anything stronger. I'll release the need for cream 116 if it hasn't cured up in a few days. I pour some saline onto the gauze and gently clean Soxy's wound. He squirms a little. It's not very comfortable for him, but generally, he's, it's pretty well. And it's done in no time. Yes! Unlock Research 6! Alright! So I guess we get an extra one. Oh. Let's go ahead and rest, actually. Oh, a new rest one. Now, let me see. Is that everything I need? I refer to my mum's recipe. Nana's original granola, amended by mum. Large rolling, large rolled oats, four mugs. Pumpkin seeds, half a mug. Sesame seed, half a mug. Sunflower seed, half a mug. Walnut, roughly chopped, handful. Flaked almonds, half a mug. Pecan, roughly chopped, handful. Dried apricots, roughly chopped handful, dried cherries and four cranberries, half a mug, banana chips, half a mug, sunflower oil, two tablespoons, cinnamon, one teaspoon, one pinch of salt, four tablespoons of honey, and to garnish, coconut shavings. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. Huh. Three and a half mugs of stuff, and then however much a handful is. That's like almost half a mug anyways, isn't it? I don't know. Oh wait, did I forget to order the coconut? I rummaged about in the supply box that arrived this morning until- And- Slip on the space bar and I continue too fast. Okay. Wait, even if I had forgotten them, I'm on an island with an abundance of fresh coconuts. Still, getting used to iron type. I set the oven to 150 and leave it to heat up while I measure out the rolled oats. I have quadrupled the quantities so that, hopefully, it will last the whole summer. It seems fast compared to how much I make at home, but it would be disastrous if I ran out. I could never make more! Heaven forbid! Homemade granola is an absolute essential. Although, to be fair, they probably don't get shipments very often, so it would be like weeks before he gets more. I mix the dried ingredients, oats, nuts, seeds, and spices together in a large bowl, and then I add the wet honey and sunflower oil to form a golden moist consistency. I've actually added a splash more oil than suggested. Mitchell was feeling a bit drier than usual. Next, I spread it evenly on a baking tray lined with parchment, partly to save up Save the washing up and whack it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, checking often because the seeds tend to burn quicker than I expect. The smell always drives me crazy. Toasty, warm, homey. I miss my mom. Once done, I add the fruit as it dries and cools and put it into several large gas storage jars, being sure to stuff fistfuls into my mouth as I do, because who doesn't eat while they cook? Okay, well that's that. Nothing at all gained from there other than maybe some backstory of a random person. Sure. Time for some serious testing in the lab. I'm intrigued to see what kind of work the professor has up his sleeve. <coughs> Follicle Miracle. So probably testing like a hair... Hair something since some other creams made hair grow sporadically. My stomach is queasy. I really don't want to do this. It's strange. I'm used to treating subjects with medication and injections, but something about this doesn't feel right. Hello, you. I smile at the gentle cat on the table in front of me. I don't get the syringe in my hand. I turn to the professor. What are we testing for with these meds again? He looks up from his desk. Is there a problem, Stuart? I've already told you, it's supposed to stimulate the hair growth. Why do we need to stimulate their hair growth? Why indeed. However, ours is not to question why, Stuart. 
the likes of you and I perform the tasks set out by the people who pay our wages. Such is life, eh? The professor returns to his work, and I understand the conversation is over. I look back at the little cat. His name is Smokey. He's a Lakoi cat with very short, fine hair. A real sweetie. I suppose the professor is right. This is just my job, and although I feel terrible, I find a way to ignore the pangs of guilt and inject Smokey with the medication. He squeals, but it's over quickly, and he can return to his cage. How long does this usually take? The professor looks up again, slightly irritated. I don't know, Stuart, but you're being paid to find that out, aren't you, my dear? Oh, yes, of course. I make a note of the time and observe the cat. After five minutes, there's no noticeable change. That would be some miracle drug if it acts in five minutes. Ten minutes, still no change. After half an hour, I think I notice his hair looks a little different, but I suspect my eyes are playing tricks on me. One hour in, and all of a sudden I can see the hair is visibly longer and seems to be continuing to grow. I must say I'm very impressed and a little confused. I decide to take a tea break. Smokey seems content to nap for a while. Can I get a cup of tea, Professor? Oh, no, I don't know how you can tolerate the foul stuff they brew up in the me mess tent. I have my thermos of coffee here, thank you. Fair enough, I'll be back in a bit. Aha! So he's really a coffee man. Alright, get on his good side. I've only been gone for 10 minutes at the most, but as I enter with my mug of tea, I instantly notice the drama taking place in Smokey's cage. I find it hard to stifle a laugh. Oh my goodness, Professor, have you seen this? The Professor looks up, exasperated by another interruption, but then he notices the cage. Oh dear, well, don't just stand there, Stuart, get him out! He's turned into an extra long hair. <laughs> Jesus. How? I mean, that's a miracle drug. I could use it for my balding scalp, but maybe not over all over my body. I open the front of the cage and pull out the large hairball that Smokey has turned into. His fur tumbles over my arm as I cradle the bewildered cat. But I never. Very interesting, isn't it, Stuart? Uh, I think it's still growing, Professor. I do believe you're right. Perhaps we should consider the clickers? The professor hands me a small set of silver electric clippers, and I immediately begin using them on the ever-expanding Smokey. I continue to shave for the next 15 minutes, until he finally seems to run out of fur. My, that's a lot of hair! We both stand staring at the pile of fur at our feet. Just keep a small amount for testing, and put the rest of it out to the back. Mora can dispose of it later. Mara? Miss Marigold. Mrs. Marigold, my mind. My apologies, Mrs. Mrs. This is not the same. Excellent work today, Stuart. Most interesting findings. Uh, thank you, sir. All I did was inject a syringe, so sure, I'll take credit for easy work. Although the results had nothing to do with me, I'm left feeling a tad guilty about Smokey's ordeal. As I place him back in his cage, I check for any signs of trauma, and when satisfied he's okay, I awkwardly take my leave. Another research. Alright, let's just push through this. Last one. Hopefully. Yes, I am ready to leave. Probably get shot again. But that's fine. More creams. Okay, I'm worried about socks. None of the treatments so far seem to be clearing up his wound. Cleaning the area with saline solution seemed to do the trick at first, but after a few days, the site got too sore to touch even with a soft cotton pad. Not seeing any positive results, I decided to swallow my doubts and use cream 116. I'm worried that I should have stuck with my gut, feeling gut feeling and not use the cream because now it's even worse. And I've exhausted my options. How best to proceed? I decide to ask the professor for his advice. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but I need your advice on socks. Send pics, please. Is this... Is this a foot thing? Or is this seriously about socks? I, I can't not think about it. I'm sorry. I snap a picture on my catalog and send it to the professor. 
Yes, that does look nasty. Have you tried Cream 116? Stage 1 protocol was used first, cleaning it with saline solution, etc. But I've tried the cream since. It's still inflamed. Persevere with the cream. Takes a while, but will pay off. I hope so. I feel doubtful, but resign myself to the professor's seniority. And what else do you have? If unsatisfied, try steroid formula in fridge. Red bag. I mean, yeah, that helps with certain infections, I think. From a actual medical perspective. I rummage around in the fridge until I find the red bag behind a box of vitamin supplements. Got it. Thank you for your help, sir. I pour the milk into a small bowl and am relieved that Sock seems to like it. I sit with him as he laps it up and keep an eye on him for a while. After about an hour, I'm satisfied that he's sleeping happily and that all his vital stats are normal. That's good. Alright, what fate is in store for us? I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning, I noticed another change in my appearance. Up until now, it's been easy to cover up my transition. I just had to keep on top of removing the excess body hair. Even the stub of tail that appeared a few days ago hasn't been a problem. Let's see it. But this new development is definitely a turning point. How am I going to explain the fact that my pupils have turned into ver vertical slits? Sunglasses, my friend. Sunglasses. I can't risk anyone seeing me like this, so I'm going to hide out for a while and see what happens. Here, spread it here. The shade is perfect. She indicated she's indicating a small spot on the sand beneath a large palm tree for our midday nap. I begin to spread the old blanket I've been dragging behind me. It's the one I used to have on my bunk when I lived in a tent. That memory is beginning to fade a little around the edges. I still recall how conflicted I felt, though. I knew I wanted to be with Snooty, but I had a strong urge to keep working on the antidote. Eventually, the decision was made for me. I found it too difficult to remember things in the lab. I kept making mistakes. Then I just sort of allowed myself to sink into my transition. It was quite gentle, and the reward was worth, the pro worth any problems. Yes! This bit of shade is perfect, just like you! But really, Snoots, I don't know why you need this old thing. The sand is so soft and warm that it creeps me out a bit. It reminds me... For goodness sakes, Stuart, you've been a cat for five minutes, and already do you know what's best for us? May I remind you that you have fur to protect your skin, but mine is exposed and far more delicate. I suppress a giggle. <laughs> yes, of course, my love. You have skin like the wings of a butterfly. Yes, and I have no idea what... Why that amuses you so? I'm just happy. You make me happy. Oh, <laughs> He's like me. He giggles when he is happy. Oh, you could make me very happy right now. Name it! There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. You really ought to be more mindful of those rash declarations. I mean it. Just name it. Anything. Why does he look so grumpy, though? But unfortunately, I have a very kind and humble nature, so I shan't take advantage of your simplicity. All I want is that you fan me with a palm leaf. Uh... How? How? There's no opposable thumbs to hold the leaf. How? How? I look around until I find one I can comfor comfortably curl in my, my tail. Wow! I can comfortably curl my tail around. This isn't nearly as easy as it used to be, but practice makes perfect, my dear. We settle down in the peace and quiet of the afternoon, me gently wafting the palm leaf over a, a snoozing snoots. How much more blissful could life be? I'm half tempted to warn the new research assistant to just throw in the towel from the start and join us, but I suppose they have their own journeys in. I'm so glad I found mine. Aww, we made it! Wait, only only two successful dates though? Two out of five? That's terrible! But at least we didn't get shot and killed, so that's progress? Whatever. Anyways, that'll be it for this episode. 
I will see you again next time. Until then, have a wonderful life.